Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 30th of September. India's Defence Minister says could have outmatched IMF bailout through Pakistan if relations were better. Activist exposes Pakistan's lie about Kashmir highlights situation in PLJK. And Sri Lanka arrests 17 Indian fishermen for illegal fishing. And now for all the details. India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has said India could have given more money to Pakistan that it had asked from global lender IMF had the relationship between New Delhi and Islamabad been better. Addressing a rally in pole-bound German Kashmir, Singh said the Indian government's package for development projects of Kashmir has increased over the years and now values more than what Pakistan was requesting to the IMF. Recalling former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee's statement that you can change friends but not neighbours, he added that if there would have been better relation, then India would have given Pakistan monetary aid. Criticising Islamabad, Singh said while Pakistan is seeking money from other countries, all is being used to run a terrorist factory on its soil. He added India's successive governments have tried to make Pakistan understand that they should stop terror cramps to no avail. Meanwhile, a war of words between India and Pakistan was witnessed this past weekend at the 79th session of the UN General Assembly after Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif raked up Kashmir issue in his address. Sharif made a reference to the abrogation of Article 370 and accused India has initiated unilateral illegal steps since August 5, 2019. In a 20-minute long speech, Sharif also made references to slain terrorist Burhan Wani and the UN resolutions in the past. He added, despite Islamabad's proposal for a mutual strategic restraint regime, India has adopted aggression and added Pakistan will decisively respond to such actions. In response, travesty. India called out Pakistan's hypocrisy for raking up Kashmir issue. India's diplomat Bhavika Mangala Nandan said a country terrorism. run by the military with a global reputation for terrorism, narcotics, trade and transnational crime has had the audacity to attack the world's largest democracy. She added the remarks against India are unacceptable from the Prime Minister of a country whose fingerprints are on so many terrorist incidents across the world. Country run by the military with a global reputation for terrorism, narcotics trade, and transnational crime has had the audacity to attack the world's largest democracy. As the world knows, Pakistan has long employed cross border terrorism as a weapon against its neighbors. It has attacked our parliament our financial capital, Mumbai, marketplaces, and pilgrimage routes. The list is long. For such a country to speak about violence anywhere is hypocrisy at its worst. India's foreign minister later in his address of UNGA also slammed Pakistan and said its GDP can only be measured in terms of radicalization and its exports in the form of terrorism. He termed Sharif's address as bizarre assertions and said issues between India and Pakistan can only be solved after the vacation of illegally occupied Indian territories by Pakistan and abandonment of Islamabad's long-standing attachment to terrorism. Pakistan's cross-border terrorism policy will never succeed and it can have no expectation of impunity. On the contrary, actions will certainly have consequences. The issue to be resolved between us is now only the vacation of illegally occupied Indian territory by Pakistan and, of course, the abandonment of Pakistan's long-standing attachment to terrorism. 
Stone throwing protesters in Pakistan's southern city of Karachi clashed with police on Sunday, who stopped them from reaching the US consulate during demonstrations over Israel's killing of Hezbollah leader Sayyid Hassan Nasrallah. Protesters chanted Death to America while carrying Hezbollah flags and posters of Nasrallah. Police said seven officers were injured and are receiving treatment adding that protesters had tried to reach areas beyond cordons agreed upon with organizers in the advance. Sunni Muslims in Pakistan's Lahore and Islamabad also marched on the streets and performed symbolic funeral prayers for Nasrallah. Following the death of Nasrallah, Hezbollah fired new fusillades of rockets into Israel, while Iran said his death would be avenged and also appointed a new leader, Hashim Sefuddin. جو ایک مجاہد تھے ایک شیر تھے جو بتیس سال سے انہوں نے قیادت کی اور اس سے پہلے سے انہوں نے اپنی مجاہدت کی اس فلسطین کی آزادی کے لیے یہ راہی القدس کے شہید ہیں اور ان کا خون رائے گا نہیں جائے گا اور اگر یہ دشمن یہ سمجھتا ہے اس بات کے اوپر کہ ان کو شہید کر کر حزب اللہ ختم ہو جائے گی تو حزب اللہ کسی ایک شخص کا نام نہیں ہے ایک تحریک کا نام ہے Kashmiri activist Javed Beg has slammed Pakistan for repeatedly spreading lies over Kashmir at global platforms. He has exposed Pakistan's rights abuses in POJK and Gilgit Baltistan, contrasting them with the progress in India's Jammu and Kashmir. A report. Javed Beg, a political activist from Jammu and Kashmir who recently exposed Pakistan's rights abuses against minorities at the UNHRC in Geneva, has criticized Pakistan particularly in light of Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif's recent comments on the Kashmir issue at the UN General Assembly. Beg drew a stark contrast between the situations of India's Jammu and Kashmir and those in POJK and Gilgit Baltistan, where people are suffering from inflation and lack of basic amenities. He expressed frustration at Pakistan's decades-long narrative on Kashmir, calling it full of lies and misinformation. Our uh, boys and girls in Jammu and Kashmir are going to international universities and their boys are, are taken to the uh, uh, militancy training camps. This is the difference. You know, world must wake up to this. World must understand this. How people in POJK, POGB are mistreated. The grave human rights violations are committed there by Pakistani establishment. And right now when we are sitting here, more than 20 countries have sent their delegates to Jammu Kashmir. Big further said the peaceful elections in Jammu and Kashmir reflect a shift in the region's political landscape, further debunking Pakistan's narrative of unrest and instability. Moving on, Ravina Shamdasani, a spokesperson for the United Nations Human Rights Office, this past weekend condemned the Taliban's new morality law and said the de facto rulers in Afghanistan are attempting to turn women into faceless and voiceless shadows. She called the Taliban's new law oppressive and said it reinforces policies that silence women and strip them of their personal autonomy. Shamdasani warned that efforts to marginalize and render invisible half of Afghanistan's population would only deepen the country's humanitarian and human rights crisis. Since Kabul fell to Taliban two years ago, the group has been imposing severe restrictions on women and have barred them from public places and banned their education beyond sixth grade. No country has formally recognized Taliban's regime in Afghanistan over the issue of rights. The death toll from recent floods and landslides in Nepal on Monday crossed at least 193, while 96 persons have been severely injured and 31 still remain missing. The disaster caused by record-breaking rainfall starting last Thursday has damaged roads, bridges and other infrastructure. Police and rescuers in knee-high rubber boots used excavators, picks and shovels to clear away mud and retrieve 27 bodies of passengers from two buses swept away by a massive landslide at a site on the key route into Kathmandu. Weather officials have blamed the rainstorms on a low-pressure system in the Bay of Bengal, extending over parts of neighbouring India close to Nepal. Hapiza development has also amplified climate change risk in Nepal, say climate scientists. 
The impact of the rains was aggravated by poor drainage due to unplanned urbanization efforts, lack of areas for water detention and encroachment on the Bagmati River. हमें सब सुरक्षा संयंत्र को नेपाली सेना सशस्त्र प्रहरी नेपाली के भाष हम प्रहरी ये सब तीनवट सुरक्षा संयंत्र मिले एटा समन्वयात्मक ढंग ने हमें काम कर हिजो मत हमें चौदहवटा डेड बडी एक्सकेवेट गये निल्य आज अलग तेरहवटा बडी निस्कसिक अवस्था रजेपी काम जारी है निरंतर एंड एटलिस्ट सेवेन्टीन फिशरमेन फ्रम इंडिया तमिलनाडु हाफ बीन अरेस्टेड बाय दी श्रीलंकन नेवी फॉर इलिगल फिशिंग इन इस टेरिटोरियल वॉटर्स ऑन संडे प्रॉम्प्टिंग प्रोटेस्ट बाय फिशरमेन एसोसिएशन ओवर द मूव इंक्लूडिंग द रिसेंट डिटेंशन अ टोटल ऑफ फोर हंड्रेड एंड थर्टीन इंडियन फिशरमेन हाफ बीन अरेस्टेड सोफा द श्रीलंकन नेवी सेड इन इट स्टेटमेंट Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M K Stalin has written a letter to Foreign Minister S Jay Shankar urging him to secure the fishermen's release. India and Sri Lanka share an expansive oceanic border without any perceptible demarcation. Fishermen from both the countries frequently stray into each other's territory while netting their catch and end up spending years in jails. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.